Okay, I figured I would do something a little bit different with this video. Up to this point, we've basically, with every tutorial, we'd start from scratch and we'd say, here's how you make a certain type of game. And we'd look at the basic highlights, the, the, the major functionality, and then you could apply that to your project. So I kind of wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to take a recently released game and deconstruct it. Now, just to be clear, I am not part of the development team, nor do I know what platform they developed it on. I'm simply using it as an example that for those of you who use Unity, how you could emulate some of these functions. Uh, and again, uh, certainly not encouraging any kind of theft or anything like that. I'm simply saying from an observational point of view, here's how you could do some of these things. So, let's look at the title screen. So, on the sides here, there are um, various options, new game, load game, things like that. So a basic uh, title screen like that, what you have is, and you're going to hear me say this a lot, is you have a game object that has a text mesh. In the text field, you type out what you want the uh, object to say. You attach a component known as a box collider. You set it as a trigger. And attached to that object is a script that uh, says what to do in the on mouse down section. In the on mouse down section, uh, it'll say, okay, when the object is clicked on the mouse, and then it will use a scene manager dot load scene uh, command, and it'll say what scene to load. And I'll include a uh, at the bottom here. You'll see a link uh, that shows how to do a title screen in a similar manner. Okay. So next, the way the game is played is that you have all these little story snippets you can play through, and you can jump from one snippet to another. And the functionality, even though the screen looks different, the functionality is very similar to what we were just saying about the title screen. Uh, each circle is a game object. Uh, it can either be a text mesh or if you want it to be a little bit more, um, uh, if you want to add a little bit more flair to the way the object looks, you can have a sprite. And then the rest is the same. Rather than a box collider, it would be a circle collider, but functionally it's still a collider. It's set as a trigger, and you attach a script. And in the script, in the on mouse down section, when the corresponding object is clicked on, in the on mouse down routine, it'll state um, scene manager uh, dot load scene and then the name of the scene. A similar function that I've demonstrated how to do, I show um, in the link below um, what I call fast travel. Basically, you have a map, and when you click on certain areas in the map, it will load a scene. So even though this is, uh, even though visually it looks a little bit different, functionally it's the same thing. This is still essentially a map, and that you're loading a scene to get to that location. So that's what that link shows. From time to time, an object will be highlighted with an image uh, like a star that rotates, gets bigger, and then disappears. That's just the particle system. I'll see if I have one. Uh, I have particle systems. I'm not sure if I have one like that. If I do, I'll come back and uh, put the link at the bottom here. In this puzzle, you have boxes that have to be clicked on, buttons that have to be clicked on, and when you click on them, they change color, and you need to come up with the right color sequence to undo the lock. So again, very similar. You have a game object. Uh, this case, it will be a sprite instead of a text mesh. And what you'll do is one of the uh, attributes of the sprite renderer is color. So um, you have a sprite renderer. You have a box collider. You set it to trigger, just like the other ones we've mentioned thus far. And in this case, in the on mouse down section, what you would do is you would change the color of the sprite. So it would be uh, 
get component sprite renderer dot color equals new color and then you just set the color that you want ideally the base color before any changes would be white that way you can change whatever color you want red green blue pink whatever so it, it's ideal to start with white and then like I said you can just change the color based on uh, whenever it gets clicked in the on mouse down section this one's a little bit different because uh, most of my examples are 2d this is 3d um, so I'll just mention how the 2D portion of it works. Basically, this is um, a uh, box puzzle, or puzzle box, I should say. And when you click on the uh, squares, the entire square rotates, and then once it's lined up correctly, uh, it is solved. So that's just using, um, again, you're using on mouse down, but in this case, it will be Yule angles or Euler angles, excuse me, E-U-L-E-R-A-N-G-L-E-S, Euler angles, to, uh, uh, when you do that, you're changing uh, which, uh, uh, the rotation, the orientation of the uh, object. There are several puzzles where you have to drag and drop objects, and in this case, you can see that there's blue X's and red X's, those have to line up, uh, so this is very similar to a jigsaw puzzle, so I've already done a demo about that. At the bottom is a link tw uh, for the uh, jigsaw puzzle demonstration. Functionally, it's, it's almost exactly the same thing. Now there are numerous puzzles where you have to enter codes. And uh, once again, the, the uh, clicking of the objects, same functionality you have sprite objects so each key would be uh, a game object with a sprite renderer the sprite would be the key image in this case uh, one of the difference is my recommendation is that the game object would be the name of the key so the key for the letter A the game object's name would actually be A the key the game object for the key B the game object would just be named B and I'll explain why in a second so each key has the sprite renderer. Again, collider box set to a trigger uh, with a script attached for on mouse down. And what you would do in on mouse down is when on mouse down, um, uh, the command in the on mouse down section would grab the name of the object and drop it into a concatenated variable. That concatenated variable would then be compared to another variable that stores the correct um, uh, password. Or actually, if the password is going to be the same every time, then you don't even need to use a variable. You can just have a constant. In other words, the variable gets uh, compared to a value between quotes. And there's a link down here how to do that. And that's about it for now. Since this is a, a really a different type of video, I'll see how much interest there is in this type. Um, because at this point, it's always been, let's start from scratch. In this case, we're kind of doing the opposite. We're deconstructing. And again, uh, I'm absolutely not encouraging any kind of theft or anything like that. I'm simply looking at something and saying, well, here's how you could do similar functionality if you have a similar game. Because this type of game is really just a variation of the point-and-click adventure. Um, uh, it has a, a semi-3D environment. Um, for the most part, when you have real-time control, you're kind of just rotating in the center. And yeah, you kind of zoom in and out like you're in a 3D environment, but it's not like a, a true... 3D, you know, fully fleshed out where you can hide under things and climb on top of things and like that. So it's really more pseudo 3D than a real 3D game. So um, if you have any questions, if you want to see a follow-up to this, uh, just let me know.